I was normal when I moved here. <laughs> Welcome to Someone You Deem Not Important FAQs. Today I'm here with Kaylee Newsony. Hi. And Kaylee is going to tell us all about her story with FA, as well as how her life has kind of changed because she was diagnosed later in life. But I'm going to let Kaylee tell you about that. So, Kaylee, you have the floor. All right. So, I um, lived in Florida until I was about 22, 23. I moved here with my boyfriend, Zach, and I was working in urgent care, and the nurse practitioner that I worked with told me I walk funny like a ping pong ball and have no family history of it so um Uh, how old were you at this point 23 so i lived a normal somewhat life up until about 23 that's my age yeah and then my symptoms just kind of snowballed from there at first a little bit of like I'd step on a cord and it'd feel like I was getting electrocuted or <laughs> I'd just fall for no reason. Mm-hmm. So I didn't really know what was going on. Um, I got imaging and they thought it was maybe a spinal stenosis from scoliosis, which is like when your spine is curved and then it compresses a nerve and causes like nerve damage, nerve pain, whatever. Mm-hmm. So I got the MRIs of that and of my brain. They sent me to a neurologist who told me <laughs> I have too many problems for him. And he sent me to Houston. And I'm still 23 at this point. It took probably eight months to get diagnosed the first time. Mm-hmm. Um, in Houston, they did EMGs, which are the nerve tests. I did a hands and leg EMGs. Um, they did a spinal tap, and then they did a nerve biopsy. They cut a nerve out of my ankle and tested it. And then after that, nothing was definitive, so they sent my blood work out to do a DNA panel. And when that came back, it was $6,000 insurance did not cover it they said not yeah. medically necessary of course they never cover it. I know. <laughs> so i had to pay in order for them to run the blood mm-hmm. so thank god somebody started a gofundme and got most of it paid for because even then they still diagnosed me wrong they <laughs> told me i had cmt just like michael so i feel like everyone trying to get a diagnosis for FA, they're like, um, CMT, close enough. And it's weird because CMT is like feet. Yeah. Like, it's almost like having RA, like rheumatoid arthritis, but your feet. And I have high arches, but otherwise I don't really have foot symptoms. High arches are common Yeah, with FA, with FA also. Mm-hmm. So a lot of the things that they said I had overlap with CMT, but like Michael said, there's not really a a blood work test you can do for CMT. But it was just strange to me that I had a DNA test. Mm -hmm. I don't know how I was misdiagnosed of that. Yeah. Like, I don't know if I also have CMT. I don't. don't. So it's very odd. I want to say for FA, they have to specifically... Mm -hmm. Test That's that specific yeah. FXN gene. That so if they don't sus- uh, suspect FA, mm-hmm. then they don't test yeah. for it, which is why hopefully more people know about FA yeah. and can yeah. learn about and it. And can maybe add it to like a newborn screen or yeah. something. So that uh, was for about two years. I went misdiagnosed with CMT. Um, still no foot symptoms. So I started seeing a doctor in Alexandria, Louisiana, at an MBA clinic. And he told me there is no way 
that that's what I have. He yeah. made me do a saliva test, like spit in the tube. And can, sent, I, can I ask what year? Was 2017? Oh, I was born in, I was born there. <laughs> At the NDA or the... Somewhere in that, like, saying here. Yeah, I don't know. So anyway, so <laughs> the, um, the saliva test was a taxi panel only. And that's when I got diagnosed. But I just found out that it didn't have my numbers. You know, the the gene sequencing? Yeah. That was not in there. So I, that was my diagnosis year. I don't even remember the date. <laughs> 2017 is the year I was correctly diagnosed. And I was mm. 25 at that point. So definitely the late onset. Um. I started using a walker every day probably four years ago. Just on vacation, I, like everyone else, I happened mm. to be like, this would probably be easier for me. Yeah. And then it stuck because <laughs> I was safer and it just, that's yeah. just how I've been since then. So I use a walker about 80% of the time. And then uh, not quite as big as charity, but less lightweight. Mm -hmm. electric for distances and things like that i feel like a lot of people are scared to like use a mobility aid well it and feels then, like definitive you know like yeah like you're i don't want to say you're giving up but that's kind of how it feels so because you were diagnosed later in life you kind of already had your life set up like almost an American dream kind of life. Like you have a degree, don't you? Mm -hmm. And you are ready to get married, have kids, all that stuff. And yeah. then, so okay. I, yeah, so I went to college to be a medical assistant and I was gonna go further, probably nursing. Um, I cannot do that now, <laughs> obviously, because I'm, they won't let me near people with needles. That would be bad. Um, so I would I'm, let you near me. I got you. <laughs> I could draw blood. I was certified. Um, so that was kind of the plan. And then me and my boyfriend knew each other from high school and started talking before I got diagnosed. In like 2013, we started talking again. And I was diagnosed in 17, so he, poor guy, just got mm -hmm. dragged on in. Um, I was normal when I moved here. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, I we bought a house, we got dogs, and then all this started. So it's kind of, it's been interesting. Not the direction, obviously, mm -hmm. I thought I was going to be, but I chose to not have kids I got a tubal so I don't have to be on any yucky hormone medicine or anything so everything is just that was actually one of the things that we kind of bonded over mm -hmm. was the fact that I had the same surgery we both got our tube side and um that was that and the fact that we also live in the same city <laughs> is um we got along very well yeah. and now we're good friends. Yeah, I know. Yeah. But I know so how long have you and your boyfriend been together? November will be ten years. Ten years. Mm -hmm. So y'all cannot get married. No. If we were to get married I would lose disability. They consider your spouse's income your income. And then that disqualifies you from getting Medicare, um, getting a monthly disability check, which I don't, it doesn't really make sense because it doesn't make you not disabled to be mm -hmm. married. So I'm, and they still, I work part time right now and they still argue with me every single month about me working 15 hours a week. So it's like a constant battle. Yeah. Um, 
So my husband and I just got married, and we were facing the same issue where if I were to get married, I would lose all of my benefits. And it just so happened that working on social media, I ended up losing my benefits anyway. But as soon as I lost my benefits, I was like, let's get married. Hmm. So I proposed, and here we are. But it's really just sucks that you have to. It's not fair. Yeah, it's just not fair that you have to either not be married or be married and lose everything. Yeah, I agree. It's terrible. So, you guys bought a house. When was that? So, we this is our second house we've bought together, but the most recent one, we just moved in about three weeks ago, and it is totally handicapped accessible. Mm-hmm. So, it's great. The shower, I can't even touch the walls from <laughs> the middle of it. Um, all the doorways have like negative jams, so there's nothing to go over. The concrete is all sloped up, so there's no steps. I'm excited to see. Yeah, you gotta come. You around. guys built that house, yes. right? Yes. Oh, and this is so every other place in town that I asked, like the other builders, there are no ADA restrictions for a house, a private house. Residential does not have any laws, so mm-hmm. they all could say no to me. They don't yeah. have to help you. They they just want to throw them up and make the money. And they yeah. said, you can knock the walls down and make it wide enough for you after we build it. But commercially, there are laws. That's so, why there's handicapped spots and ramps and things. Mm-hmm. But residentially, there's not. So they wouldn't even build it? No. How you want that? No. How? Like their architects were at no, no, they said absolutely not. Well, I'm glad you finally found someone. Yeah, someone in town. I'm excited to see your house because yes. I'm also a little bit jealous. That is my goal is yeah. one day hopefully to build my own house. Yeah, because I know not only is it accessible, mm-hmm. but it is custom for you. Mm-hmm. Yep. So it meets all of your specific mm-hmm. needs. And I know that, you know, there's any laws, like you said, mm-hmm. but everyone is so different that I feel like a standard for disabled people mm-hmm. is not enough. Yeah, I so. agree. Your house is completely accessible what does that look like like what are the features so the um the main ones that i made sure we had were the sloped concrete so there's no steps um the negative door jams so there's nothing like a metal piece over the door to go over so there's still a seal but the seal is in the concrete I never heard of It's that. really cool. And then I have a roll up sink in the master bathroom. Um, grab bars at both toilets, master and guests. All the doorways are, I think, 36 inches, like hallway, bathroom, guest bathroom, all every doorway. Um, a shower, I think, is six by six. So we built it kind of in being in a chair full time because right now I don't use my chair around the house I just use a walker but everything is like set up because you know it's kind of you just have to prepare I yeah. could I could still be walking for a year or two years or I could just be totally in a wheelchair so we just wanted to make sure hopefully we can yeah. make this work for another 10-15 years if so that's the main ones. Like the sloped concrete is great too because it's the front or the back, so I can get in the backyard super easy. 
I don't want to ask you how much, when, how much was, I don't want to ask how much, but how much? What was the price difference as far as uh, building a normal house versus adding all these accessible features? So I think that probably would depend on the builder specifically. Our builder had an architect and he was great. So he went in and modified the plan. So for the plan, just moving doorways and things, there was no change in price. Mm -hmm. You have to find somebody that is willing to modify their plan if they don't already have an ADA plan. Um, and this man worked with us like out the bathtub and the master so can I get into a bathtub so that's why we have the big shower um, and he offered like we had an obsolete cake but like grab bars and all that but otherwise it wasn't a huge price difference so really I think it depends who you go with and finding somebody that will that's surprising that for once accessibility did not cost that much more but it was still very difficult. <laughs> so if you guys are interested in seeing Kaylee's house, she might show us in a video soon. So comment below if you want to see that. I know I do. <laughs> Definitely. So because of FA, you and me were not mothers but we are a dog mom yes ma'am which i think is still another but i agree we are a dog mom how many dogs do you have i have two dogs they're both boys they're from the same litter the catahoula mixes so it's a whiskey musty dog um one is 93 pounds and one is 72 i think Louisiana State Dog. Mm -hmm. I did not know that. Yeah. I'll have to show you pictures. They have like the cracked eyes. They're so pretty. I'm biased, but they're pretty. And they're, I mean, they're wild. They're hunting dogs that don't hunt. So <laughs> they catch squirrels and turtles. And they're crazy. <laughs> what does your husband do for work? He works for a helicopter company and he does maintenance that for a helicopter because that bring people out to the oil rigs in the Gulf. So I'm from Florida originally, but all his family besides one brother is here. Mm -hmm. So he we're here because the money's here, so that's a good <laughs> thing because we get to meet, but there's quite a few other FAs somewhat locally, like in this little corner. So, fun fact, I don't know if you knew this, but I was told by a doctor um, when I did a clinical trial, um, like five, seven years ago, that there's actually an outbreak of FA in Louisiana, because FA comes from French culture mm -hmm. and Louisiana is a lot of Acadians and so yeah it was when I heard that I started like looking around I was like yeah everyone yeah Louisiana people there's a lot <laughs> I mean I think I I have met between eight to ten people I think mm -hmm. that are in Louisiana specifically and probably five or six in Texas. Mm -hmm. That's crazy. Mm -hmm. I'm not one of the Acadian ones. I'm not from here but yeah. I'm an Acadian transplant. Mm -hmm. That counts. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think I am still from the Cape. Somewhat. <laughs> All right. So thank you for talking with me, Kaylee. Yeah. And that was Haley's story. Hi, bye. Woo! Woo! Well, thank you, Kaylee, for sharing your story with us and 
I hope everyone watching enjoyed it. And if you have any follow up questions, comment below and I'll try my best to answer them. Um, maybe Kaylee can help us out and answer some as well. I volunteer you. You're welcome. Thank you. <laughs> um, but thank you for watching and bye. <laughs>